Our next guest is Alex Bosco from SB Tactical. He's here to tell us about this, but tell us about his company and the new ATF decision. What's going on, Alex? How you doing, Colin? I'm doing good, doing good, doing good. Another wonderful day here in Dallas, Texas. I see, I mean, you are surrounded by guns, so of course you're doing pretty good. Yes. Uh, at least from my perspective. <laughs> it's good from my perspective, too. <laughs> oh, man. So, so, so you, you are the man behind the brace, for those that don't know. So, so kind of quickly give people who don't really know an understanding about how that came to be. Um, like, how did we even get to the point where we are now with the braces and, you know, all that other gray jazz? I'll, I'll, I'll try to make the story as short and quick as possible. <laughs> um, basically, when I was at, uh, I came back from overseas. I was overseas for about 14 years. Uh, I came back from Italy to Florida, and um, shooting was one of those things that I always enjoyed. Um, I had uh, two children. I had to find myself a job, and my wife was a foreign national, so it was not <laughs> the easiest of times. But um, basically, I was at the range one day, and there's one of the range buddies that was next to me who was uh, somebody who had uh, lost an arm um, during uh, one of the, uh, the wars that, we've been, that have been going on for the past uh, well, that went on for the past 10 years. Um, and basically the range master, the RO came over, he was firing it with one hand and said, uh, you know, listen, I don't want you shooting that like that. It, it's spread, you're spraying bullets. It's dangerous. And as you know, you don't argue with the ROs. Yeah. Um, so the impetus to this was anger, I guess. Uh, it got me mad. Uh, that night I went home, I fashioned something out of, uh, original piece was foam, went back to the range and uh, yes, I was trying to instigate the RO. Uh, don't try to do that. <laughs> uh, so I, I went back, and the RO said, "Yeah, that you know, he, it, he didn't have a problem with it. Uh, the way that I had designed it was a good way." But he said, "You may want to talk to ATF." And at the time, I had no idea yeah. uh, why I had to talk to ATF because I didn't know about uh, you know NFA, SBRs, and all that other. Yeah, none of that stuff was was at the forefront of my mind. So. Uh, I, I wrote a letter to ATF asking them if I could do that. I sent them a prototype, and, and I guess the rest is history. <laughs> yeah, to, to say the least. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I, remember, I, remember, I remember very vividly when I, when I first encountered the brace. Um, and, you know, it, it, people applauded it, applauded it for a number of reasons. Um, but, you know, for a lot of people, I'm pretty sure it, it's, it's, its genesis is a lot different than what they anticipated. I think there was – they. A lot of people think there was a more calculated approach to the idea of the brace. Um, and that's actually contrary to the truth. <laughs> no, yeah, mo most people, it's funny. I, I was speaking to one of the engineers at, at SIG. Uh, this was shortly after we started working together. And uh, he was an older, you know, crusty, one of these guys that had been working in guns for his entire life. And yeah. he's like, you know, Alex, the only reason you thought about that was because you weren't part of the industry yep. because had you been part of the industry and known about all of that stuff, you wouldn't even bother. It. You would have said, "Forget it. You can't do that." Yeah. So, so what, here's a question I want to ask: When you did encounter the restrictions in terms of you know NFA items, SBRs, and then you finally like your world opened up to this idea, well, not just idea, this reality that we were kind of living under. Um, what, what went through your mind? What, what were your initial thoughts? Wow. Well, about uh, the NFA in general, I mean, somebody who, well, imagine somebody who knows nothing about guns, mm -hmm. who starts to read. One of the first thing he reads and looks into is the 1934 National Firearms Act. You gotcha. So that was my first, you know, introduction to all of that. And it, it just seemed so odd. It seemed such a, you know, it was almost archaic. You look at it, you're like, is this applicable to today? Yeah. Is it not? But the law is the law. So, I mean, this is a country of laws. Yeah. We have to abide by them. You can't go around them. So yeah. so now let's talk about SP Tactical. How, how did SP Tactical get started? Well, uh, SP Tactical started um, shortly after uh, we, I mean, the, the idea of it started right away. I mean, yeah. we came up with the, the idea of the brace. Um, and the problem is, is that when you start with these types of ideas, they require money. And as I mentioned, <laughs> we had, we had a, at the time we had a six month old child. Yeah. I told you my wife didn't have her green card yet. We were in the process of doing that. I was looking for a job. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I spoke to an attorney and the attorney's like, look, this is a great idea, but you have to get it patented. So I went to the IP office and they said, well, you gotta get attorneys to do this or you can do it yourself. I went to attorneys and the attorney said, well, you know, you're going to need about 10 or $15,000. And I'm like, Ten or fifty thousand dollars, you know, that 
so basically we went to family, friends, everybody kind of helped us out and uh, we got it patented. Uh, and uh, from there, one day at a range, I met a partner uh, who helped me out. Uh, you know, he, he helped me begin the company. Yeah. And, uh, you know, obviously the company has become so much more than what it was back in the day. But, um, you know, I think many Americans probably start the same way I have. I mean, it's, it's yeah. a, we, we live in a capitalistic country. Uh, if you have an idea, we live in a place where you can actually make it. And now what happened to me is probably one in a million. <laughs> but, um, but I do think that, uh, you know, this country has offered me such a great opportunity. And I think so far I've made the best of it. I hope I can do more. Absolutely. So now let's talk about this, this ATF reversal. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk, talk about it. I, I remember uh, when there was the, the first decision was handed down about it, about the brace and, and you know, changing the, um, uh, gosh, complete, just blanked out for a second. But design. Ch changing the design of the gun, um, the implications of changing the design of the gun merely based on the way that you fired the gun. Um, you know, that was a big thing that people kind of were a little bit, you know, Kind of, kind of angry about in many ways because it didn't really resonate or make much sense to a lot of people. So, so, so talk, so talk me through the process of of where it started off with the legalities behind the brace and then where we are now um, after this recent reversal. So, I think, I, I mean, I can say the beginning part quickly. What mm -hmm. happened was we got an approval for our product. Um, Everybody's talked about this. Uh, you know, they say leave well enough alone. People yeah. can't. Do that. Um, the problem is, and, and it's not a problem. I think you know people have questions. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. And a lot of people had questions, and they had written to ATF. And ATF um, getting all of these questions uh, during a period of time where, um, let's say, politically, um, they were trying to um, they were trying to make more gun laws. Uh, what happened was is that the higher ups, I think, got got a whiff of this, and they said, "Listen, we we gotta we gotta cut this thing out." So they, the ATF went from saying one thing, and then eventually they they changed their idea. And as you know, the 2015 open letter said that simply by uh, shouldering the product, you have redesigned it. Now we have always been uh, in, in disagreement with that, yeah. um, and we've been given we were given the opportunity. Um, through a lot of hard work and communication to change that. Uh, and um, I think, you know, it, we got to say, everybody, we're, we're always ready to jump on ATF. This is not the time to do that. There have been people in ATF that have worked with us since day one on this. Yeah. Uh, so we got to say kudos to them. That, you know, there are gun guys in ATF. They're not just a bunch of bureaucrats. Yeah. Uh, there may be a lot of bureaucrats in ATF, <laughs> but uh, in, the, in our scenario, um, We've worked with, I think, some of the most exemplary people in the industry. And uh, the, the letter that we have today is an example of that. It's an example of what we can do given the opportunity to communicate with these people as opposed to fight and yell, which is what a lot of people do. I mean, if you saw, I was told uh, about some of the letters that they were receiving yeah. after and before. I mean, the people, there's, there, there's a lot of shenanigans that shouldn't be going on. You know, people really try and... And beat up ATF. I think a lot of it had to do with, with you know, of course, the, the former attorney general we had in place. Um, you know, we just we had figureheads who were supposed to be representatives of these organizations. Um, and they didn't do a very good job, at least advocating or at least we thought was being fair with respect to our rights. Um, and and I, I largely agree with you. I think there are, there are a lot of people who individuals in the ATF who are caught behind the bureaucracy of it all, you know, um, and may not even ne necessarily agree with a lot of uh, the way things are done or conducted. Um, but like you pointed out, we're in a, I think we're in a very good place now where we can start to kind of put the human faces um, behind the ATF and then almost c kind of restart the, the discourse um, so that we can kind of have this conversation about the state of, of gun laws in this country and then maybe do something very effective in terms of changing a lot of them. And then I think you are a prime example of, you know, demonstrating how that kind of cohesive working back and forth, you know, kind of results for the better. Yeah, it's it's not it's you, t you touched on a lot of points. It's not easy to do to do what I did. Yeah. I mean, it really does take 
a lot of focus and I'm here trying to run a company, but I'm also trying to have these discussions with guys at ATF, which are not easy to get in touch with. You can't just pick up the phone and say, hey, I want to talk with you guys. What can we do to make this thing better? It doesn't work that way. Yeah. So, you know, there's, uh, it says you, the, the letter is headed from Mark Barnes. We had an, an exceptional team of attorneys that helped us bring these discussions and argue them correctly with ATF. You know, it's difficult for just one person to say, hey, I'm going to call ATF and I'm going to try and get them to change their mind. It doesn't work that way. It's a team of people that did that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, luckily we got in front of the right people. Luckily, the political atmosphere changed to our favor. Um, you know, we're not talking about post-apocalyptic Hillary Clinton. Clinton yeah. you, know, you know, we're talking about, you know, a presidency that is in favor of listening to what, you know, what, what we can do. You know, it's um, it's been a... a it's been a ride. Let me put it that way. It's been a really difficult ride. I really think that, you know, this has been my, my I would call it my opus magnum. This is something that I've <laughs> yeah. done for so long. I mean, ever since this happened, you know, for me, it was almost a spite towards me. You know, I, I gave my word to my customers to say, this is the letter that I have. And, you know, I went to all of these customers to say, this is our product. And when they went back, when the ATF went back on their word, I, it, I almost felt like, you know, I, I lost face with, with my customers. Yeah. And, and, and I was going to be—it was going to be the last thing I did to, to get this thing changed for them. Gotcha. So yes, I did it for myself, for my company, but I also did it for all of the people that bought of our, bought our product. Awesome. Uh, so, so where do where do you see? Well, first of all, I want to touch on this. So, with that being said, where are we where do we live now in terms of the reversal? Um, what, what what's the state of utilizing the arm brace um, now that we have this reversal in place? Well, I mean, I think, you know, I say I think they were clear. Yeah. Um, the title of that letter is a reversal. I think it's it's a clarification. Uh, and what they've clarified, you know, is that it is not their opinion that simply putting it to your shoulder, uh, the SP tactical brace, and firing it changes the classification. You know, there has to be some kind of real intent. Yeah. Uh, and they've defined that in the letter. They said that there's a certain number of things that, you do, if you do those things, you change the way the product oh, has been it? presented to ATF, yeah. that will cause the, the, the brace when fired from the shoulder to make an NFA firearm. Yeah. Um, and, you know, people can read the letter. I think it's difficult to read. I think uh, as an attorney, you, you know, right, they write yeah. these. Yeah. It's, it's, it's I'm, for some I'm just making you do all the heavy lifting. I, I read it backwards and forwards. <laughs> I'm just making you do all the heavy lifting in terms of explaining Yeah, it. I, I have a very <laughs> tough time reading that letter. Yeah. I had to read it. I'm not the it, smartest of people, yeah. but it, it took me a whole bunch of times to it's, understand. I mean, it well. it's it's definitely written in a way to cover bases, and then there's also the is, the issue of plausible deniability, and and, and all of those factors come into play. Um, and and in many ways, it's it's basically, at least from what I gathered from it, it, it's basically saying like, look, you can use you can use this thing however you want. However, when it comes to the actual designing of the item, like what is this designed for, that would um, that would incite you in needing to, to this making this thing an NFA item, you know, doing these physical acts to change the structure of the intended purpose of their brace is what is what's going to kind of execute the whole. Well, no, now I need to uh, fill out this paperwork, sign these tax, do this tax stamp, so forth and so on. And so, right. and they, think, they've defined it. It's in yeah. there. I mean, if you read the letter, they say. Don't as long as you're not changing the configuration that we've presented it to, yeah. to ATF, do what you want with it. The minute you start now, I'm not an attorney. I'm interpreting yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Let me just be clear here. <laughs> as long as as long as you are not changing the product the way SB Tactical has presented it to ATF, yeah. use it how you want. Just yeah. don't change it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, um, so really quickly, wh where's where do you see SB Tactical going now? What what do you guys have planned for the future? Well, we've got look. It, Companies, the only way a company survives is by innovating. Yeah. Um, and we, we've we been at the forefront of that. Um, you know, I've only been in this industry for five years, so I feel like a novice. We've, I've, I work with, uh, I think, some of the best people in the industry. One person is Jeff Creamer. The other person is Amy Pavir. These are two people that have 10-year-plus uh, at Sig Sauer. And, and, you know, everybody knows who they are. And I've really, they've been mentors to me. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been bouncing off a lot of the ideas that I have, and uh, I can safely tell you that we have some ideas coming soon that the industry will say, wow. They okay. will say, wow. 
So. Well, I'll, I'll take your we'll word get. for that. And I'm, I'm excited to see what you guys have coming forward. I, I'm, I've been actually really impressed with what you guys have done recently. So I'm definitely going to keep my eye out and see what you guys have. Thanks, man. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Alex. Um, look, like I said, I look forward to seeing what you guys have up the pipeline. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. You have a good one. You too. All right. So we're going to take another short break. And when we come back, the so-called Santa shooter, Marcus Allen Weldon.